Step up, step in. The Chilean mind capsule. One dollar, kids. Good job. Oh, no chili. You having fun? You want to stay in there for a little while? Yeah. Good job. Now, you're going to have to stay in there for like about an hour. All right. You know what? Have a good life. This is my wife and my mistress. You could just call me Minor 21. Ladies, I'm sorry it worked out this way. Yeah. Don't fight over me. Don't fight over me. Let's all get in the capsule, ladies. <laughs> all right, everybody else got a chance. Now it's time for me to check out the Chilean mine capsule, rescue capsule, whatever we're calling it. Let's see. This is no big deal. Plenty of space. I'm going to get out. Hey. Hey. Hey, you guys. Hey, Anna. Unless you've been living under a rock like these guys, you know all 33 miners have now been rescued after more than two months underground, 69 days. And that's the subject of our segment, You Are Here. Let's take you through it. Okay, August 5th, the main ramp of the mine collapses. No word if there are any survivors, but tributes are popping up immediately. 17 days later, the 22nd of August, a probe finds the miners, comes back with a note saying, we're okay. Yeah, but they were eating tuna and mackerel only once every 48 hours. I don't know if I could take that above ground. Four days after that, the 26th, while you and I are probably setting up our slip and slides for a midsummer frolic, we get a video of the miners, and they actually look pretty good. I think that guy is smiling. Now, August 31st, a few days after that, work on three rescue tunnels begin. They called A, B, and C. Plan A, B, and C. Not one, two, and three, because the alphabet lobby always wins. And last week... Tunnel B actually reaches the miners, which brings us to this week. All 33 miners are above ground, safe and sound, except for maybe that miner 21, who apparently his mistress was there instead of his wife. I'm thinking he was probably hoping that capsule goes back down. Well, late night comedians were on fire this week, which politicians got roasted the hardest. We'll tell you next. Each week, people do great things. Sometimes it makes the news, sometimes it doesn't. Either way, here's a look at four people this week who are much better than me. This is Aisha. She's an Afghan woman whose nose was cut off by her husband under the Taliban's rule. She was left for dead and managed to make it to an American military medical team who rescued her. She received the Enduring Heart Award at a benefit for Grossman Burn Foundation. Amazing story, amazing person. Aisha, you are much better than me. Well, this isn't a person, but mm, it's a dog, and he's still way better than me. A four-year-old Labrador retriever. She, sorry, it's Pearl. It's a female black lab, and the once-abandoned dog helped bring 12 people to safety with the LAPD in Haiti. And Pearl, you are way better than me. You know what? I'm going to give you a bite of my donut. This, this is Chance Anthony, a one-handed high school football player. This week, he finished up last season of high school football. The third year he's been a starter for the Breckenridge County Fighting Tigers. I didn't even start my senior year of lacrosse, but that's because the coach started his son over me, but I'm not bitter. Chance Anthony, you're way better than me. You know this guy. It's Pat Tillman, one of the greatest Americans ever. He's uh, had a new completely bri uh, built bridge over the Hoover Dam. It was named after him this week. Well, this morning, I actually scratched my initials in Wolf Blitzer's locker. Fallen hero, football star, fantastically good looking. Pat Tillman, you are way better than all of us. All right, well, you've heard the expression, any publicity is good publicity? Well, not if you're running for office. Each week, we highlight the harshest political commentary from the world of comedic television. We call it Roasted. And nobody seems to have been roasted harder this week than New York gubernatorial candidate Carl Palladino. Comments he made on the campaign trail regarding his views on homosexuality were front page news all over the country this week. And Palladino apologized, but my fellow comedians aren't letting him off the hook. I don't want them to be brainwashed into thinking that homosexuality is an equally valid or successful option. It isn't. So that's Carl Palladino making the case to Orthodox religious folk <laughs> that gay people will brainwash their children into dressing and acting in an unconventional manner. <laughs> gay people. I did not see Eric Cantor condemning New York gubernatorial candidate Carl Palladino when he mass emailed a bestiality video. <laughs> of course, the bestiality video wasn't bad for children because it was a woman and a male horse. <laughs> Nothing gay. My old boss, Stephen Colbert, Carl Palladino trails Democratic candidate Andrew Cuomo by double digits in the most recent poll of New York voters. And all that attention from late night comedians, it's not helping him. Well, thanks for watching What the Week. Remember, stay engaged, think for yourself, and have a great weekend. We'll see you here next week.